indeterminate forms. So let's say, for example, you are given the task to evaluate the limit of a function as x approaches a, or as x approaches 0, or as x approaches positive or negative infinity. If, upon evaluating the limit, and what comes out of that is any of the following forms, then what you have here is an example of an indeterminate form. The limit of the function that you are working on has an indeterminate form. So this is, this is the class of indeterminate forms. And what do you do? What do you do when you see a limit that follows one of the indeterminate forms? Well, you can tell it from how we call them. We call them indeterminate forms. Indeterminate. So what that means is the limit cannot be determined yet. We are not saying that the limit does not exist or, or the limit is equal to zero or infinity. No, we are not saying that. What we are saying is we cannot yet determine the limit of the function you are working on. You cannot yet tell the limit. You cannot yet be certain about the limit. And because you cannot be certain about the limit, you cannot make conclusions about the limit of the functions that you are working on. Now, you might be wondering, why? Why? Isn't it that infinity divided by infinity is equal to 1? No, it's not. It's not. If, if what we have here is 5 divided by 5, and you know that this is the same as 5 times 1 over 5, you know that this is equal to 1. Because 1 fifth is the multiplicative inverse of 5 and a real number not equal to 0 multiplied by its multiplicative inverse is equal to 1. But we cannot, we cannot say the same things about infinity over infinity. Why so? Because infinity is not even a real number. It is not a real number. So, so you cannot apply to infinity the properties of real numbers such as the existence of a multiplicative inverse. I have here a question mark. We cannot yet be sure about the limit of the function. It's the same with infinity minus infinity. Isn't that equal to zero? Well, yeah, if what you have here is something like 10 minus 10, that is equal to zero. Because 10 minus 10 is just the same as 10 plus negative 10. And negative 10 is the additive inverse of 10. And so when we add them, it's equal to 0. But you cannot make the same conclusions about infinity minus infinity. Infinity has no additive inverse because it's not even a real number. Okay, so... Upon evaluating the limits, and these are the initial results that you are seeing, what you do is you cannot yet make a conclusion about the definite limit of your functions. Okay, so the purpose of this video is not to show you how to resolve indeterminate forms. No, it's not. We will devote a separate video for that. So the purpose of our video is to show to you the instances when indeterminate forms might arise. Determine if the limit is indeterminate or not. The limit of x squared minus 9 divided by x minus 3 as x approaches 3. So this one is a rational function. And so what we can do is we can just evaluate f of 3 over g of 3. And it's equal to, so 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 9 is 0, and, and 3 minus 3 is again 0. So this one is an indeterminate form. Find the limit of 6 over x as x approaches infinity. So this one is a rational function, and I know, I know this is not the first time you are seeing a function such as a rational function. When we have something like this, what you can do is 
go back, go back to, to the graph of a rational function such as this. So the graph of that function is something like this. This is not the first time you are seeing a function such as 6 over x. Okay, so what is the limit of 6 over x as x approaches infinity? So as x approaches infinity, your function, your function approaches the horizontal axis. And you know that that means the limit of 6 over x is equal to 0. And so this one is, is not an indeterminate form. The limit of this function is equal to 0. Okay? Now how about this one? The limit of e to the x minus ln of x as x approaches infinity. So e to the x as x approaches infinity is is infinity and ln of x as x approaches infinity is also infinity again you can uh, you can make an intuitive uh, idea about what their limits are if you were to look at their graphs and by now given that you are senior high school stem and into basic calculus you should be able to to see right away the graph of this function so what is e to the x, it's an exponential function, and you know that this is how its graph looks like. For ln of x, your ln of x is a, a logarithmic function, that is your natural logarithmic function, and you know, you know that its graph is something like this. So, when x approaches positive infinity, okay, so we shall pay attention first to e to the x. When x approaches positive infinity, your function increases without bound. And so that means the limit of e to the x is infinity. Now, when x approaches positive infinity, we are now paying attention to your ln of x. As x approaches positive infinity, your ln of x also increases without bound. So this is infinity minus infinity. This is infinity minus infinity. And so this one is an example of an indeterminate form. You cannot yet make a definite conclusion about their limit. How about this one? What is the limit of 2? divided by x minus 1, times x squared as x approaches negative infinity. So this is a product of functions. And so we can apply a theorem for this. We have a theorem for this. So what we do is we just apply the theorem on the product of functions. We will get the limit of 2 over x minus 1 as x approaches negative infinity, and then we will multiply it to the limit of x squared as x approaches negative infinity. Okay, pay attention to 2 over x minus 1. So that one is again a rational function, and you know how, how the graphs of rational functions look like. So that one has a vertical asymptote that is equal to x is equal to 1. And so, in this part, your graph looks something like this. Okay? And this one has a y-intercept at negative 2. Okay? So, something like that. So, the limit of our function as, as x approaches negative infinity, okay? So we are going to, to negative infinity. This is our uh, horizontal axis. We are going to the negative infinity, and our function approaches zero. The value of our function approaches zero. So this part of our limit is just equal to zero times. What's the limit of x squared as x approaches negative infinity? you know that that is equal to infinity. And so this is 0 times infinity, and this is an indeterminate form. Don't make the conclusion that it is equal to 0. Don't make the conclusion that it is equal to infinity. We cannot yet tell. 
So I am going to flash to you the indeterminate forms one more time. Again, when you are given the task to evaluate the limit, and this is what you initially get, then what you have there is an indeterminate form. The limit cannot be determined yet. You cannot yet tell the limit. You cannot be certain about the limit yet. So do not make a conclusion yet. We shall devote a separate video about how, what to do when you have an indeterminate form.